ergot, skull, copper deficiency, drought, herbicide residue, If you have a problem with your cereal or oilseed crop, there are some questions that need to be asked. First and most obvious, what is causing the problem? But you must also ask yourself, is the problem going to affect the yield or quality of the crop? And if so, do the benefits of treating the problem outweigh the costs? Treating soil and crop problems is not something that can be done haphazardly. It calls for a systematic approach like a doctor treating a patient. The doctor is using diagnostics to determine the cause and extent of her patient's problem. Out here, the crop is the patient and you are the doctor. You should use the same diagnostic approach. One of the main differences between agricultural and medical diagnoses is that the patient can't come to you. You have to go to the patient. Before we discuss the diagnostics of crop problems, Let's take a look at how to find them. One of the easiest ways to spot problems early is to regularly examine your field. You can greatly increase your chances of successfully addressing the problem if you discover it as early as possible. Scouting your field on a regular basis is the best way of finding soil and crop problems before they get out of hand. Field scouting is little more than a planned, methodical walk through the field, carefully checking both the soil and the crop. When you scout your field, it's a good idea to carry a kit containing all your diagnostic tools, like a trowel, sample bags, and a magnifying glass. As you walk your field, maintain a pattern that will ensure you'll cover the field as completely as possible. Growth stages in cereals can be an important part of your production technology. Early in the season, knowing how to do leaf counts can help you in the proper timing of herbicide applications. Tiller counts are really important for yield estimation. And why that's important for spraying is if you have or or if you want to spray with tilt for disease control, you usually spray that at about the, the, uh, the flag leaf stage, the pre-heading stage. So you need to go in there and do a yield estimate. Is it economically feasible for me to spray my crop? What we want to show you here is the coleoptile. And that is a protective leaf structure that helps the plant emerge from the soil. And if we dig down here, we can see that this is a structure around the plant. And this is our soil level, and that's where the coleoptile quits growing and the first leaf appears. So if I pull this plant out, I should be able to show you that coleoptile structure right there. And it's equivalent to a leaf structure, and on a tiller, it's called the profile. This is noble barley, a six row barley, planted 10 days ago. It is at the one leaf stage. The first leaf has a rounded tip, and the second leaf is just visible. Okay, this is Harrington barley. It's at the three leaf stage. The first leaf is still denoted by having the rounded tip. Then there's the second leaf, has a pointed tip, and then there's the third leaf arising from the center whorl. Doing leaf counts at a very early stage may seem very simple. This is before tillers have started to, to be formed. Here we have just a little past the two and a half leaf stage. But once those tillers start to form, things get a little bit more complex. Here we have a plant that's at the four leaf stage. But because of the presence of these two tillers, 
we could mistakenly call it a five-leaf stage. This is where it becomes important to understand what are tillers and what are main stem leaves. And if you're doing a spraying application, you need to know whether your recommendation is based on the total number of leaves for the plant or if it's based on main stem leaf number. This is the first tiller and it arose from the coleoptile, which has now pretty well disintegrated. This is the first leaf. Remember, it has that round leaf tip. Within the axis of that first leaf arises the first tiller group. And we can tell it's a tiller group because of this structure called the profil that surrounds that tiller group. So there's our first leaf. Our first leaf profil, first tiller profil. Our second leaf, pointed leaf. In the axis of the second leaf arises the second tiller group. Again, you can tell it's a tiller group because of the structure called the profil. And we have our third leaf. We have a well-developed tiller here in the third leaf. Again, it's protected this tiller by the, the profile. And we have our fourth leaf, our fifth leaf, our sixth leaf. And you can see the seventh leaf is just emerging from the whirl of the six leaves. So this would be at about a six and a quarter leaf stage. This is oats, and this is just at the flag leaf stage. That means that the final leaf is just emerging from the leaf sheath. You can see we have all these leaves that are just very upright, a little shorter, that are emerging from the canopy. When we look down here, we can see that there's no leaves developing from that leaf sheath. Oh. That it's the final one. There you go. So now what structure, the, the head structure is going to start moving up through the canopy and through this leaf sheath. It's at this stage that we want to assess our, our crop and see whether what the disease picture looks like and if we should be spraying for, um, for disease control. This is the, the flag leaf. You look at the flag leaf, see how clear and clean that flag leaf is. And then the next leaf you look at is down in the canopy. It's the, the leaf below the flag leaf. And have a look at it too and see how much disease or spotting you see on it. And it's a good idea just to go right down into the canopy, see how much disease is there, and uh, make an assessment on whether you want to spray it. At this stage, anthesis is probably uh, complete in most of the heads, and that means when we open up a head, we'll have, or open up a spikelet, um, we'll see that the uh, anthers have, have, uh, have turned a yellow color, or, or, or even if it's very late anthesis, have turned a white color. So that means that our grain is now developing. In these earlier heads, we'll get a, a yellower um, anther. Again, uh, if at this stage uh, you're seeing a lot of disease in, in, in your crop, you could still uh, spray it for, for, uh, with a fungicide for disease. As the kernel develops, uh, it starts to lose water, it moves into a soft and the, the, the endosperm becomes very starchy and this is what we call the soft dough stage. It's, it's, um, there's still a little moisture there but it's relatively dry. There's lots of structure, nice doughy structure in the kernel.